Movie Making with Renelle Golden is brought to you by Samira Entertainment, supporting indie films and the filmmakers who create them. Stop by their website to learn more, www.samiraentertainment.com. That's www.s-a-m-e-r-a entertainment.com. Hello, everybody. Today I'm here with Tony Gibson. He is, let's see, what aren't you is what I should probably say, but director, producer, writer, actor, and musician, all around creative. How are you doing today, Tony? Um, I'm great, Renell. Thank you for having me on the show. I appreciate you coming. We're really excited to talk to you about your filmmaking journey as well as your latest film that has been making the rounds around the world and winning awards, Gypsy Moon. So first question, you were a rock and roller or a metal band okay. front man or something. How did you end up filmmaking? <laughs> yeah, so uh, so I began my career as like a front man for several like metal bands. And this is where for me, it was like, I guess, the calling, right? The sounds and the feeling of the stage and the audience I guess it inspired other things because like when I was a kid, I always, you know, I always loved movies. I loved like Indiana Jones. And I loved, you know, everything that had to do with becoming someone else. Right. Or Love just it. creating this, you know, person. Yeah. This imaginary person to like jump on pillows and thinking there's like lava pits, you know, <laughs> on the, the floor and stuff. So I guess it transitioned over from, from me, you know, starting mosh pits and running, you know, crowds of people. Uh, on stage to actually tapping into the film side of, of life. It was something I, I guess I always wanted to do, but it was a different presentation to an audience. To me, that's something I believe I just wanted to like grow better at. You know? Yeah. What's the first thing you did acting? Uh, acting is what I got into after I kind of you know left the stage for a little while. Um, I got involved with the theater at a college and actually started to try to, you know, break the ice with how to become these other people. You know, I felt that, you know, it was different from, you know, jumping in mosh pits and then, oh, yeah. and, and, you know, <laughs> being kind of a, a wild, a wild child. It was a little bit different. So, little bit, but, uh, but, it, but it was intriguing. Yeah, a little bit. So my very first production on theater was Arsenic and Old Lace by Joseph oh, Kessler. Really? Yeah, and I had to play uh, 1930s beat cop, uh, oh, wow. like within a 15, and with a 15 minute window, I had to turn into an 80 year old guy, Mr. Gibbs, in this this story that wow. was really like, yeah, it was like just throw you right in there, you know. You I mean, it, I mean, it wasn't the one character. I, I, <laughs> right? Wow, you got it, your like, feet but, wet uh, by being everybody. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it, you kind of sort of like like all at once. Yeah. And so after we closed curtain on on a lot of these productions, I got compliments as to, you know, that the, the body language you gave these characters were completely different, and the way you you brought them onto the stage or whatever you were doing creatively, it really spoke to the audience in a different way. And that and then that's when my theater professor, I, I went through a couple of other different theater productions and and he had told me yeah i think you belong in film oh wow like you just you got the right face for it and i, and I recall he said um he sat all the students out in the audience one day and it was just us there in the empty theater and he told me that uh that i reminded him of of johnny depp and i said wow. okay he's like well johnny depp scares me i'm like well what well, I, <laughs> I, I hate i hate to be scary <laughs> yeah. I, i'm not trying to be scary he's like he's like that's not a bad thing you know it's basically a really good thing because oh. what I, what it is is the like the level of emotional feedback that you're giving to a, a character or to anyone out and to like an audience it's impactful right right it's very uh uh, you have a, a lot of authority type figure to your stage present, no matter who it is. Yeah. Right, right. On, wow. That so, is so cool. Yeah, on that. Yeah, yeah. So it was, it was a little bit of a challenge. Really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so from theater, it kind of escalated into film from that point. Then I started getting involved with these films that were, I was driving like five and a half, six hours to, oh, you know, wow. the nearest city where where I'd gotten the message, you know, the message I got was from Rodney Carrington. Rodney Carrington has said something like, you know, if you are going to fish, you know, you're going to catch bigger fish if you fish in the ocean 
instead right. of a pond. So basically what he was trying to say is you kind of need to be in the area where, you know, you're trying to build your credentials or, or get your name out there, et cetera, et cetera. Right. That's so cool. That's, yeah. That's kind of what I started doing. I, and I was, you know, I did the extras thing. I kind of, I was in grind house and, uh, and then I got these small roles where I, I played a cop in a comedy and, and stuff like that. So it, it kind of like, they were baby steps, right? Yeah. They were like baby steps to kind of get me to a point where I was actually leading and I was doing all of this, you know, bigger, stuff stronger. Being, you know, independent. right, right. Bigger and stronger, but it was like on an indie level, you know, it's still very, in, very indie, yeah, which I prize. And that's kind of where, you know, it led to me writing and, you know, that's and directing. Yeah. My first, my directorial debut came from a movie called Something in the Woods. It was about a family and based on a, a true story, a uh, cowman of Copeless Beach. Oh, wow. uh, about a Bigfoot. And, you know, and the movie, uh, family was back in the 60s was scared to kind of live on their farm because of this this creature that was out in the woods. Right. Oh, that's uh, so but cool. But it was never known. <laughs> yeah. You told, yeah. You told this was, based on, I love that. How did that end? All right. So that. <laughs> <laughs> but still there. Yeah. Oh. So it, <laughs> wow. yeah I had showed up for a good friend, a guy named uh, David Ford. And he's the one who wrote this film. Uh, and also directed as well. But I showed up on this set as like just a PA and someone to help out with the knowledge I guess I had. And overnight, I became the director for the film. Oh, so wow. it's like that's very uh, cool. It, right. So all the knowledge I accumulated over a decade, you know, 15 plus years, I'd actually applied to uh, the creative side of, of my my thought process in this guy's script so yeah. that was very uh it's very very challenging you know with the heat and everything but it actually turned out to to be a really cool really cool you film ended up hooked with um, that, didn't you? uh for my for, I, that's what happened you know it's yeah. like at that point i'm like okay now i'm addicted you know it's like I love now it. i'm addicted and and I'm, <laughs> and i wanted to to make uh gypsy moon which was uh mm -hmm. was something i wrote and directed and also uh starred in it where did you get uh, just the idea kind of, for that? Just kind of. So the idea, I've always been inspired by like Universal monsters. I love the thought process of the the original Wolfman. Okay. Uh, you know, and the way that they, you know, kind of incorporated, you know, gypsies and stuff in their uh, their piece as a movie. But the way I saw it through my eyes was that you don't have to get bit. Uh, to be a werewolf, you know, it's like you you were chosen by this, oh. you know supernatural right. force of event you know it's how that. it's how you become a werewolf yeah it was a different take on the whole it, monster vibe it's right? like the universe uh, i wanted I you based on what like choosing the right person to carry almost is it a good thing i don't know i haven't seen the movie yet uh, so yeah are the well, werewolves I'll, necessarily I'll, I'll, bad I'll, I'll, who knows <laughs> Uh, I mean, yeah, it's that it's cool. that's where, you know, I try to leave it for the audience yeah, to take what resonates with what they feel about it, that's you know, because the way I wrote it, you know, I'm kind of a deep thinking type of guy at times. So the way I wanted it to be portrayed to an audience is something that you could feel, you know, that was extreme. It was intense. It was, you know, you know it was watched, powerful. And it, yeah. Oh, I watched your trailer. And the first thing I noticed that. The way you light it and the shots, it definitely is very moody and it draws you in and it's got like this almost haunting element to it. The way I was looking at it, it was beautifully yes. shot. Absolutely. And and the story, I didn't realize because I didn't read the synopsis. I just watched the trailer. So I didn't fully realize that it might be about werewolves. So interesting. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I love how it's got a different twist. Uh, I'll just say it like that. And this was, I mean, close to uh, close to a decade ago that this this thing was shot and everything. It, it took over five, you know, six plus years to get everything the way I kind of wanted it. Was and this your baby? Yeah, yeah, it was my baby. And, and I wanted it to be something that was special to, to everyone. You know, I mean, I didn't want to just be, you know, another, you know, indie filmmaker out there. You know, I wanted yeah. it to be, uh, you know, something that was unique and something that draws you in. And, you know, we were on a, a very, very minimal budget. You know, it's not, it looks it's, it's not one. Thank you. Thank you. I, I there was a lot of people to think behind 
making that look great. And the team I had was phenomenal. Did your team stick with you through the entire process because you shot it over time? Or did you have like challenges with that? I had some challenges. I mean, there's some things I know on my side. I wanted my vision to be seen in a certain way, right? A lot of that had to do with time. You know, I lost some people because of the time, you know, it took to, to get it out. There was people who stuck by me through it all. That's so um, amazing. The thing is, I'll never be one of those guys that just tried to uh, just throw it together. You know, I, I want it to be, I want it to be felt, you know. And yeah. then at my next step from here is creating feature films that actually have a budget to allow you to be creatively expressive yes. in a way that you really need to be, you know, without without the limitations. And you it know. does take that's where budget. I feel I'm at in my career. That's that's good. That is uh, good. Yes. Gypsy yeah. Moon is a period piece too, right? Like it's shot in the past. Yes. I, yeah. It's uh, 1799 Romania. Okay. That's, I was trying to figure out when in the time period. From what I've seen from the trailer, it looks great. You did a great job. Do you have a film that you're uh, working on now, like the next project? I've got a few that uh, have been on the back burner and I have uh, a library <laughs> of things that uh. I've written. <laughs> so I guess there's a time and place for, for everything because what's most important is that anybody that you're involved with is like confident in what you're going to be able to bring to the table, you know, as far as an yeah. artist, you know, even money, you know, money people that are out there in the industry, they, they want to know that, you know, what you're doing is going to, you know, make the money. But to me, I, I want it to be something that other people like an audience can feel, you know, like, right. um, you take that emotion with you uh, outside the theater. I love you that. You know, so yeah, yeah, finding the balance yeah. is hard in filmmaking between the the money side and we get to do what we really believe in creatively. It's very hard to find that balance as you move up in your career, and you are at that point now. So, what kind of advice would you give somebody who wanted to get into this industry and become a filmmaker? Uh, I say definitely try to do your best to not let any outside interferences distract your vision. That'd be the best advice because in the independent world, you're dealing with a a lot of people's personal emotion or, or, Mm -hmm. you know, opinions, you know, opinionated people or, you know, these people that perceive you one way or another way. I mean, all of this stuff means absolutely nothing to your story. You know, and so those are the distractions is kind of allowing, you know, any any kind of uh, outside source to kind of dim your fire or your light for what you're trying to create. You know, because I think that's a real big thing right now in the independent world, especially. Uh, I feel like there could be a ton of more like teamwork and us, you know, pulling each other up, helping each other out you know, motivating each other, being there, inspiring and encouraging toward one another, you know, uh, you know, that's my idea. Yeah. I have this (laughs) saying when I put together my crew and in life, but, you know, kind of like we rise by lifting others. So if we're good to everyone and they believe in the project as much as we do, and they're going to be good to us. That's who I want on my team. People that care, not people that belittle or yell or scream, or I've seen it all on set. And I've seen people that You know, they'll call people names or use really bad language to tell them to like hurry up and move their butt or something. I don't, I want to not use that language. Right, right. But you know what I'm talking about. And it's just like, why? And I much prefer the happiness at the end of the day. So, yeah. Where can people find you if they want to know more about you? You can find me through IMDb, Tony Odell Gibson. I'm on IMDb. I'm on, you know, Facebook, Ghost Ship uh, 36. Uh, um, can be found like TikTok, Tony Gibson 85. Very cool. Uh, so Tony my, Gibson. my Instagram, yes, and my Instagram is at Howling Full Moons, which, of course, I you know spring back into my my wild child side. There a bit. <laughs> is that the front guy in the metal band or? <laughs> Howling. They, yeah, it's like they, it's that guy who never really left the stage. And honestly, yeah. that, that's what I'm working on. You know, now I'm actually creating music more uh, a little bit now. Um, uh, now I, I haven't that. necessarily taken a break from the film world, but I've geared more toward getting back to the stage where yeah. I came from. You do so many things. Do you have a favorite thing 
directing, writing, making music? Do you like one more than the other? Uh, it's hard to say. I, I love feeling like a kid in a candy store. That's where I think I'm, I'm, I love, you know, I love embracing uh, my inner child. If you are excited about anything that you're doing, then you're never, honestly, you're never limited if yeah. something goes down or, you know, as say yeah. right now, you know, there's a strike out there in the world and stuff is happening. Well, that's, that's not hindering that inner child from being happy and if being you've creative. got multiple things yeah. you know, that you're creating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a really so, good point. Yeah. Wow. So right now you're making music. Have you written any of the music for any of your movies? Have you done it uh, like that? I, I actually, I mean, I had samplers of, of things. I, I didn't personally write any of the music for my films that I've done. I just suggested the way I heard it in my head. Because as a musician, that's something I incorporate as a filmmaker is yeah. I can actually hear the music in my ear and in my head when nothing, I mean, it's crazy sounding, but when nothing <laughs> is there, I can hear the music while a scene is going on, and it helps me to, I guess, validate that emotion. You have to help help know. that actor express. Yeah, you yeah. probably know what yes. you need to hear in your film. Like, I want to hear yeah. this, or you know it, because yeah. you know it's going to make somebody feel this way. When I put together that part of a film, to me, music's a character. You know, it is a Absolutely. whole other character the, in the movie. Yeah. Yeah, it's the heartbeat. I mean, it's, it, it's the heartbeat of, it of your is. film, you know? Yeah. I, so I, that's, that's, that is awesome. I can't watch a movie without good kick ass music. I just, I struggle. Like, if it's got like almost no score and lots of talking, I need the music to fully feel the scene. And so I always am like, exactly. no, <laughs> yes, I want this, I want that. But because I grew up in that and it's in my blood. And so I, I love that you do that. Do you think you ever will write? music or or like lyrics for your film yeah i will eventually i will gravitate toward like composing and stuff eventually and i compose now i oh, do a lot of composition cool. yeah so the music that i'm i've been putting out there i've got a, a few songs i just recently released a cover for uh wicked games that oh, was by chris cool. Isaac. what's the yeah, name that of I, the band I, you're with or are you doing that as yourself it's kind of up in the air <laughs> and uh, yeah. i think we was pointing toward a, a carnix or something like that but it's still metal but it incorporates a lot of jazz uh and just oh that's different. cool Got yeah a blues so, in there too okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, That's no worries. Awesome. Yeah. It's been so fun to talk to you today. And is there anything else you'd like to share before we do our five for five questions? Uh, no, nothing other than, uh, you know, uh, yeah, if you have any like kind of movies or stuff that you're ever doing or people want to uh, collaborate, just please feel free to reach out. And, you know, oh, uh, cool. I'm, I'm always open. I love so. that. Collaborating is the best way to come up with, you know, amazing stuff. So I love that, especially when I'm writing. Yeah. I love writing with people. Your sounding board for each other yeah. and your ideas get more complete and bigger in your world. So um, I'm a crazy writer. That, though. That's right. Yeah. If, if when I start writing, yeah. if I have to feed the kids or the dog or anything like that, just forget it because I become neurotic. I can't leave till my story <laughs> is done. <laughs> Like I'll sit at the right? screen. Like, oh, it's bad. Like y'all know where the Captain Crunch is. You leave yeah, mom well, alone. My kids are grown up, so thank God because they're probably not making. Yeah. <laughs> So, <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, My daughter's all as well. I have three beautiful daughters and oh, they're, they're all cool. growing up on me as well. So, How does that so happen? yeah, it's really. Oh, that's cool though. Uh, Are they into you know, it, movies? It's just that, man. Yeah. <laughs> Do they make music? Uh, movies? They are. Yeah, no, they're not in that way. They're not. Um, uh, they're very artistic, like Layla dances, oh. uh, Destiny paints. And Shaylin, you know, she's like super, super smart as far as business savvy. And, oh, wow. Uh, but they never like kind of uh, got, got into involved that. with the film. Yeah, one day I'm going to surprise them and they're going to show up and they're going to be on a set with their All dad. And it's just going to happen. Yeah, so they have admit. the skills you need, right? <laughs> like, one can be your line producer. Yeah. You yeah. can do a movie yeah. with dancing, you know? Like, <laughs> just put them in there. and They won't. Yeah. Know. Yeah, it's coming. They have the best names. <laughs> oh, my God. They have amazing names. Yeah, right? I love those, so, all right. Well, before we wrap, Thank I'm going to ask you. you five goofy questions. And they really are that silly. So, okay. all right. First question. What is your okay. favorite food? Pizza. 
pizza. Pizza. Pizza. Pizza. Pizza. Pizza. I, I just love pizza. It's my favorite. Well, who couldn't love pizza? Okay, next question. Number two, what is something that inspires you or motivates you in life? Uh, you know, it might be an odd answer, but but kindness and and oh no, that's and, beautiful. Yeah, like seeing someone like just noticing like an old couple at the park just like holding hands Aww. or something like that. That that inspired that, that right there like inspires just something else. That's something that I, I guess sports that. can't always really say, but I guess love, love above all is Aww. is what uh is what pushes me, you know. I love that. You know, well, thank you. you know, I've, <laughs> I try to balance my crazy with, with my romantic. So that's it. That's all right. <laughs> okay, yeah. next question. Not <laughs> related, though. What is something you've always dreamed of doing, but you haven't done yet? Something I've always dreamed and haven't. Uh, you know, I haven't gone treasure hunting like out in the Maldives, like out oh, in wow. India, like where there's like beautiful water or something like that. I would oh, love wow. to go treasure hunting over there. You know, that that, really that cool. sounds like, uh, yeah, that-, that sounds like that would be just epic. You know? Yeah. And you'd have a lot to take home for your stories in the future too, just from the location and the experience. Exactly. Yeah, that that's inspiring as well. Yeah. Oh wow! Well, yeah, I would totally shoot a movie while I was, while I was doing it. <laughs> oh, I could see that. Okay, that's cool. All right, number four. What is your favorite song to sing at the top of your lungs when you're driving around in the world? Uh, "Wicked Game" by Chris Isaac, really? which I covered. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay, I can yeah. understand that then. That's cool. Um, okay, this last one is very hard yeah. for most filmmakers, but. Some people actually have one. I have many. What is your favorite movie? Oh wow! It's yeah, not, it's hard, right? Okay, um, it is, it is, that one's such a difficult one uh, because there's so many so good many. ones that made me feel so many different ways. Yeah, so it's that is so hard. Uh, yeah, like one I've always came back to, I guess, was ET. You know, oh, yeah. uh, when I was a kid. Uh, yep. You know, that movie is something I guess I've always kind of came back to. Uh great movie. As like one of my one of my favorite yeah, great movies, you know. Yeah. Um That's that a good just, one. yeah, it's one of those that just is very well done and, and it can they can last throughout any generation and that's kind of what i'm looking to make is just movies that last throughout the generations you know that's cool and, uh, just you like will. Books, you know, you know? i will say with et though i always wondered why my bike wouldn't fly Same. <laughs> <laughs> like, but, you know yeah, i did <laughs> <laughs> I did fly, but I didn't fly for long. I'll you didn't like land that. well. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I I landed very unwell, but I did fly for a moment oh, no. with my cape tied around my neck. <laughs> oh, well, that's, I guess but, that's cool. Uh, as long yeah. as nothing was broken when you landed, but. <laughs> Very, very cool. I've loved having you here today. When you have your next movie or something and you want to come back and talk, just let me know. And we look forward to talking to you some more. And I wish you continued success with Gypsy Moon. Thanks so much, Ronell. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. Thank you. Have a great weekend. Bye. You too. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Today's show is sponsored by Gym Kitty helping women on their health and wellness journey by providing high-quality, organically sourced vitamins and supplements. Visit them today at www.jimkitty.net. You've been listening to Movie Making with Rennell Golden. Be sure to come back for our next episode where we bring you the people who make movies you love. Got a topic about filmmaking you want to hear on our podcast? Send us an email at moviemakingpodcast at gmail.com. Thanks for listening. This podcast has been sponsored by Samara Entertainment.